Be seated. What a great day this day is. It always is a day full of joy, excitement, and unexpected things. One of my favorite things to do this year and last year was to go down the line outside the cathedral as people were gathering in the morning just to talk and see where people are from and what brought them here, and to answer questions that they might have. One person this morning asked, will there be snakes in the service? <laughs> My answer was, undoubtedly. <laughs> you are welcome in this place. I'll say more about that later. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. And I wondered if St. Francis visited the cathedral on this day, what he might think, what he might see. If Francis walked up Amsterdam and turned into the upper drive just outside the walls here, the first thing he would see was, would be a statue, a bronze statue by the gate of a homeless person laying, lying on the bench statue is entitled The Homeless Jesus. If Francis wandered a little bit farther, he would go into the close, into the grassy area out here, and there he would see a statue of himself, an artist interpretation of St. Francis sitting on a bench with birds and squirrels and animals all around him. My guess is that Francis would glance at the statue portraying him as a lover of animals and would maybe nod in approval, but he would go back to the statue of the homeless Jesus. And there's a reason that he would be drawn to that particular piece of sculpture. Francis was born into a life of, of luxury, and plenty. He was born into a life of privilege and wealth in the 12th century. He renounced his wealth as his life went on, and the luxury and the privilege that went with it. And he founded an order of monks, and later nuns, whom we know today as the Franciscans. Francis became the patron saint of beggars and homeless people and poor people, but also the patron saint of animals and God's creation. We do not remember Francis today so much for the reformer of the church that he was. Francis was a rabble rouser. Francis challenged the church in its complacency and in its wealth. He went, like many preachers after him, he went from preaching to meddling. <coughs> and he became too upsetting to the powers that be. He challenged the established order and he became, what shall we say, a not popular person. He preached generosity to the wealthy, servanthood to the comfortable, sacrifice to the indolent. No wonder he was not popular. Francis made people uncomfortable. Some say, some say that Francis was made patron saint of animals and portraying him thus for, as preaching to birds and squirrels as a way of diluting his message diluting his message and challenge of reform and became the patron of animals so that his story, his challenge was disempowered. You see now perhaps why Francis would head for the homeless Jesus statue here at the cathedral rather than the representation of himself as a lover of animals. 
I wonder what Francis might have to say to us today if he walked in in this moment. First, I would believe that I believe that he would have to be glad to see us here holding our beloved animals, either in our arms or in our hearts. Indeed, I believe it would be pleasing to Francis to see us holding all of such creation, all of creation in such respect and honor, since all creation is express our expressions of God's abiding love. Francis. Francis saw creation as a unified whole, bound together by none other than God's love. Secondly, I think Francis would most definitely ask us some questions. He would ask us as a nation and a people what we are doing to care for animals and the creation, what we are doing to care for the poor, the destitute, the dispossessed, and the downcast. <coughs> How might we answer those two questions? I'm afraid that our answer would be upsetting. I'm afraid that our answers would be dis disappointing to Francis. We would have to admit to our disregard as a people, our disregard for the care of God's creation. We've not done a very good job. We've not cared for God's creation because we've polluted the planet's resources. We've raped the environment. We've contaminated the seas with plastics and chemicals and noxious gases into the atmosphere. In this day, especially in this day, aided and abetted by the current administration in Washington, who's dedicated, it appears to me, to the care of business and wealth more than it is care for creation. What might Francis say to recent tax reform, Senate hearings, oppression of women, the murder of blacks, and the rise of the alt-right, Francis would be clear that in such a climate, it is always the poor, the young, the elderly, the vulnerable, and the weak who suffer in order to pay for the excesses of the wealthy. Francis' world, no doubt, Francis would no doubt be distressed by the oppression of women in this culture, the prejudice against brown people and black people. He would be disdainful of the exercise of blatant and white male privilege, such as we've just seen in recent weeks. I have no doubt that Francis would be saddened by the violence that soaks our culture today with the murder of innocent children using automatic weapons of war. I can't imagine that Francis would be comfortable in this world or even perhaps in the church today. But Francis' message would still, would still in a steady way, be his message of servanthood and moderation and service of the poor. This service, this service is a good starting point for each and all of us. Francis proclaimed and lived his life rooted in a belief in the kindness of God, the kindness of God toward creation, toward all humankind. So on this day, I am going to issue a call to you. It may not be a call that you expect. The call I issue to you is rooted in Francis' life and mission and ministry, and I call on you and me and all of us to be kind, simply to be kind. To be kind 
toward the creation, to be kind toward the animals that we love and who love us, to be kind toward one another. Be kind to your spouse. Be kind to your friends. Be kind to your children. Be kind to your boss and your employees. Be kind to those who don't like you and whom you don't like. Just be kind. What is there to fear in being kind? What is the harm in being kind? Kindness is an act of bravery amid the selfishness and violence of the world. Be bold. Be kind. Follow Francis in his footsteps of kindness and servanthood. And in doing so, you will help bring peace and wholeness to this world. And you will serve God in the spread of God's reign.